It's still plus politics now. Senator Matthew Rogide, a two-term lawmaker representing a door south in the Senate on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, has said that the incoming president, Bola Tinubu, has a lot of work to do in terms of integration. There is no doubt that Nigerians have never been this divided as we are today. But those who have always thrown up the ethnic and religious cards are those who only want to prey on the people while seeking power. Now, he added also that there was no perfect election anywhere in the world due to human actions which played out in the recently concluded elections. Joining us to discuss this is Sogbeye Eli. He's a spokesperson, APC Campaign Council. And Shehu Musa Gabam is the national chairman of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Gabam, of course, you know, uh, you've played in the political field for years. I, I know this um, very well. Um, and like many other people have posited, even, of course, um, uh, the very intelligent minds across the country have, um, you know, fears of the fact that this country has been so divided uh, in the space of two years compared to any other time uh, in the life of Nigeria. And most of the finger pointing is towards politicians of your likes, whether it be APC, PDP, SDP. And most people say that this is done just for selfish reasons. And right after the elections, it's very easy for politicians to say, oh, let's all come together. Uh, let's all band together for one Nigeria. But then this is not the rhetoric that we get during the campaign season. And I want to put it to you. Um, why is it that this happens year in, year out? This, uh, I'm, I'm so consistent on it, and um, I have no apology saying it. Politicians are responsible for what is happening today in Nigeria because there's no patriotism in their mind. What is in their mind is their selfish interest. I've been around the game for a very long time, and I'm among the founding fathers of restoration of democracy in 1999. And uh, so long as we continue with this attitude, it must be me and not any other person who will continue to be in this cycle. We must develop a concept of accepting that we have to go through a process. Somebody must win at a time. And whoever that win the election, the country must come together and support him for the success of the country. You know, the election was, was quite manageable. I wouldn't say it was a very successful thing. Everybody have his own version of what happened. But if you put all these things cumulatively, you will understand clearly that the law that established INEC have actually given INEC the power to conduct election and declare elect, uh, results. INEC have conducted election. INEC have declared the winner of the election. And SDP, we have taken the position. We have said, look, you cannot go outside the law. We don't want recklessness or lawlessness, uh, you know, after election have been conducted. We stand by what INEC have declared. Those who disagree should go to court. We must trust our justice system and that is the only way you can fix the justice system they must face issues that they have to go through patriotically and come up with judgment that will stand the test of time will strengthen our fundamental pillars as a nation there's no perfect anywhere in the world and i've always reminded people that up till tomorrow there's crisis of election in america between trump and biden but the nation is still moving on hmm. so as 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 politicians and patriotic nigerians we must agree that the system is not perfect. We will continue to fix it patriotically. We will continue to differ ideologically based on fixated interest. But the national interest must supersede any other thing. I was among the first party that called for the president to reconcile the country. That is the only way the president can move forward. Hmm. Going by the situation on ground, the balkanization of the nation, by weak leadership of the current administration, uh, President Mohamed Buhari, I believe Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, going by his track record, he should be able to bring the country together. Shagari government brought Nigerians together. There was utilization of power. So our expectation is that the president-elect will utilize the power efficiently and effectively by creating a balanced environment for the entire citizen of the country to feel that, look, this is our country. We have a sense of belonging. Citizens must be protected, a law, law must be restored, and deterrence must be created so that at least we will know that bad elections that have taken place, good governance is, is keying in. 
people will start to say, okay, we let us relax, let us support the system. That is the only way the president-elect can have a lead way. Otherwise, it will be a crisis from the takeoff to the end, just the way we are having crisis to form leadership of National Assembly now, because this crisis started from the PDP, the lost grip of the system to determine the zoning formula of the National Assembly. And it's still reoccurring right now, you know, the fragmentations and then the fixation of interest, where will the president of the Senate come from, the speaker? You know, it's because the party is weak. You know, in those days where you have party that have authority to determine, you won't have people arguing and, you know, overstretching that it must be or not in other parts. Mm -hmm. So my, 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 my appeal is that we must stabilize the system. You know, election is gone. Those who disagree are in the court. We must allow courts to adjudicate through all the submissions to them and then see how we can move on. This is the position that I maintain. But politicians are responsible for the current crisis we are going on. We forgot patriotism. We key in individualism and interest above any other national interest. Mm. Let me come to you, Sugbeye. Um, Of course, uh, when we talk about travails and problems, your party in River State has seen... Um, you know, the better of it, uh, and this is not in the nicest way. The APC in River State has had its best days behind it. But we're not going to talk about that. I I'm most curious about, you know, the issue of politics of rancor. Why do you think that this particular way we play politics has continued to prevail? Uh, it's easy for us to point fingers at politicians. I'm not in any way trying to say that or absolve them of that responsibility. But do you think that we the people, we the followers, and we those who are either supporting one party or the other have a role to play in how this politics of rancor has continued to persevere over the years? Yes, thanks for the question, Miriam. Um, my point of intervention would be to consider uh, a fundamental question. As Nigerians, have we ever thought about the idea of a nation state? Uh, it appears to me as though we're having this thing wrong over and again because over time, uh, people see politics as a means to an end. Right? Uh, what is seen as the biggest industry? So when it's time for elections, people throw everything, everything, religion, um, your region where you come from, ethnic, ethnic group, and fundamentally, nobody speaks about ideology. And that's why people can move from party A to party B, party B back to party A, and so forth, and so forth. Now, for us, what's the cardinal problem of us Nigerians? So first, we must agree on the idea and concept of the nation states, now have a country called Nigeria, to which we owe allegiance as people, whether you're not, you're South, you're Christian, you're Muslim, or you're taste, there must be a nation first, where everybody owes allegiance. Number two, we must de emphasize the idea of making politics a mission end. All this must be for service. And I am I'm only advocated that look, let's let's decentivize what comes to political office holders. For instance, if you're going to run for the Senate in Nigeria, I have said time and again that not all senators should, that's not be equal pay. I say, how do you make it less attractive? Every senator that wants to run for office must show what his ending is right now in terms of employment or business. Okay? They will have a bit that looks like you're coming to serve. That the come to Senate does not make you automatically super rich. Also do that. Forget it right. So it is the process of rewards. People are making too much money by simply winning an election. So they're throwing everything to win. Now that's wrong. That's why when we win elections or some people have lost elections, the reconcile candidates and political parties becomes a very difficult thing. Mm. Because that winning at all costs mentality is the driving factor. And then we have a respect to to my constituents in the judiciary. We have also had a situation where we have a challenge with how the justice system delivers when people are grievances at the tribunals, right after elections. So until we're able to have a step where if you win elections, that's not what the law says. That's not what the law provides for, and the justice system puts in check immediately. Then, then and only then, 
can also have a situation where people will not invest much money and time fighting over the election by all means. The last election I had, uh, for me, uh, was a bit more dirty and messy than what we had in 2015, when President Mohamed Bouhari as candidate for my party were challenging the incumbent President Ulo Jonathan. Uh, even up to 2019, it wasn't this messy. So it would appear as though at each new election cycle, where a new incumbent, so an incumbent is, is going out, a new person is coming in, the fight that person will be more dirty, the more slinging, the character assassination, all of that does not accord with a national ethos. As Nigerians who say, though tribe and tongue be differ in brotherhood stand, that was our old term. I think I subscribe to that. Once we agree on the national ethos, Nigeria first, then two, we agree that office must not give you an advantage over people that are not buying, so that you don't become super rich just because you hold a particular office. Then the whole of the madness for power will come down. Okay. Then we we'll go back to the party system. In the party system, uh, I think that's the breeding ground for all of this acrimony and bickering. At the party system, party leaders are not party leaders are not are not helping us at all. Party leaders are not helping us at all in terms of the management of elections, in terms of uh, party primaries. Party leaders more often than not, I, I say with respect to my brother on the panel, Shiv Musa, the Abam of the SDP. Party chairman and secretary at the national level, up to the state level, down to the LG award levels, appear to have preferred candidates. So you find something where, in spite of what the party guideline says, or the party constitution says, ahead of the primaries, people like that preferred candidates and work for them. More than when they become the delegate election team. So people are prepared to make sure they do everything to show their candidates in March. Now that's the beginning of the bickering. Okay. So when those candidates are presented to elections, internally, they face a sabotage by those who feel so changed. Mm. Right? You're not able to solve that one before you go to the general elections. And that becomes a fight to finish. We cannot make progress continue on this lane. All right. We need to address these issues to have a country I'm proud of. L let me come back to you, Mr. Gabam. Um, you talked about, you, you know, we needing to stabilize the system. And so we also talked about briefly um, the judiciary and uh, the, the trust deficit that we as Nigerians have in terms of the judiciary. And he talked about lopsided, you know, um, judgments in terms of, you know, the tribunals. Um, what do you even begin to start from in terms of, you know, this unity, restoring unity, decency? Um, he also talked about pay uh, for members of the National Assembly. Um, again, I always ask when people say, oh, we need to change, this, you know, how the National Assembly is and, and, you know, the politicization of running for these offices or um, making it more service, uh, service, uh, you know, oriented. Um, but it still boils down to the members of the National Assembly, doesn't it? And and who wants to cut off their nose to spite their faith? <laughs> well, exactly that's what it is. You know, the quality of the people that have been elected in the National Assembly determine how the National Assembly will function. When you send low-quality people that don't understand what it takes to make a law or fix the country, it is extremely difficult for, for, for the system to be overhauled within the time frame that is expected for the overall benefit of the country. Largely, we've been sending people who don't understand what it is even to be in the National Assembly. They have never moved any motion or add value to any valid conversation that will strengthen our value as a nation. So it starts from there. Now, the time issue and what it takes to correct some of the loopholes that have been identified in the system that will strengthen the unity of the country and take away some of the areas that have created this discrimination in the country, like the indigenship and what have you, that is a factor that will determine where you will be employed or quota system or all these sort of things. There's no way you can expect a united country unless you expunge some of these primitive provisions in the constitution and allow the latitude for the Nigerian to have a sense of belonging, to believe that I'm proud to be a Nigerian. I will not be discriminated on the basis of my tribe or my religion or my region. And then that is when we will begin to say that, yes, we are now consolidating as a nation. Secondly, you see, the, the, the manner in which the law 
that was provided, for instance, the uh, 2022 Electoral Act, it has a lot of loopholes. We were all practicing it for the first time, both the INEC and the political parties. And then most of the parties, in fact, all the parties are victims because even the APC have gone to tribunals. The PDP have gone to tribunals. I've also gone to tribunals because I've won some elections. There are mutilation of resource sheets and so on and so forth. And the law is clear. If you have not gone through the process of accreditation and you've not been accredited, you cannot cast your vote. And if you tamper with the resource sheet, election of that particular polling unit is cancelled. But you see a lot of resource sheets being mutilated. And now you begin to ask officers that are responsible, that have been trained and have the authority to say, look, what happened with this resource sheet tempered with the election? Or what happened with the ballot box tempered with the election? Or snatching the ballot papers or the resource sheet also tempered with the election? So you have a system that is, we, we are all experimenting, and there's a lack of enforcement, there's a lack of deterrence. And INEC admitted that there are sabotage in the process. They have constituted a committee to investigate those behind the sabotage. And we are waiting to see some of them have been arrested in the court or have been arrested by the police. None have taken place yet. Now, yeah. fundamentally, fundamentally, if you bring in someone that have not been around the corridors of power and have the experience of management of diverse interest group in Nigeria, there's no way he can drive the country. You know, you, you have to understand that it's a collection of so many divergent views. But it's also required a man that has a vision who understands that he doesn't have any other country except Nigeria. But, but, but Sobeye, I'm, so I'm so sorry to, I'm so sorry to stop, talk over you, but it's very important that I come in. Sobeye made um, a, a case that party leaders play the role, a huge role, and most of the time you play favorites. So when you talk about, um, you know, people having the vision, people who are right for the job, does the party leadership allow for that? Because, you know, you all throw up such certain times, people who are not necessarily fit for the job. So, again, fingers are pointing back to you, sir, and the likes of you. I can, I can confirm to you it is true. I was in PDP. I was the founder of PDP from G7. I know imposition have taken place. Quality people have been thrown aside. Mediocrity were brought in and put in the position that they cannot function. They don't have the intellectual capacity to add value. They were there because Godfathers nominated them into the system. Now, some of the reason why some of us left PDP is because of this impunity and rascality. In the party that I am today, I can tell you, we have less cases anywhere because we did not go for revenue generation. We went for quality, and that is why we succeeded despite the hostile environment. We succeeded in winning some elections. Some of them that we won declared were in the tribunal, being challenged left, right, and center. We, we brought the changes. We don't do it. And that virus has already affected APC. You know, hardly you see quality people, but you see Godfatherism bringing in people that cannot add value to the system. And that is why the country is going down. In terms of quality of judgment, is going down. Okay. And the, the hope of everybody is the judiciary. If the judiciary do not overhaul and do not understand that this is the only country that they can really adjudicate on issues that will add value, rather than going on the sentiments and creating regional issues, agitations, suppressions, you know, subjugations, you know, we, we will pay for it heavily. Okay. I do hope and I pray our judges will understand where the country is coming from okay. and where we are going. I will do, will do a lot of adjustments. All right, quickly. So where you, you have a few minutes to wrap up on this, and I'm going to ask you a very direct question. Do you think that the president-elect is equipped to deal with the issues? Because, I mean, there's so many issues. There's a potpourri of issues right now waiting for him. How well equipped is he to handle what's ahead of him? Mm -hmm. So where are you there? So where can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead if you heard my yeah, question. I would say I would say um, for the president elect to pull up himself for elections, uh, that in itself is an expression of um, uh, an idea. And that's the idea of the of the task at hand, and it is he comes prepared in the sense that um, he's governed a million Nigeria. Uh, called Lagos for eight years and away from government house Alosa in the in the May 2007 he has been directly directly involved 
in the making of uh, Lagos governors had, had come behind him. Again, in the Buhari presidency, we didn't say uh, President elect Bola Kwetinibu, to the stranger, uh, he's been close to power. I'm, so, I'm sure I gained at this level for the class of 1999 governors. He should have the requisite experience to manage Nigeria with all the complexities. So I, I, I shouldn't I, I shouldn't sit back here and imagine that uh, he cannot hit the ground running from day one. He honestly should. Okay. I would be surprised, on the other hand, if he goes to office and turns out to be uh, one who is unable or somewhat incapable Okay. Well, I, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, that's our time. So, Bay Eli is a spokesman for the Rivers APC Campaign Council, and Shehu Musa Gabam is the national chairman of the Social Democratic Party SDP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's the show tonight. I want to thank you all for being part of the show tonight. Don't forget, if you've missed any of our episodes, please go to our YouTube page, Plus TV Africa, and play catch up. I am Mary Anacon. We'll be back tomorrow talking for development. Have a good night.